October 10, St. Francis Borgia, General of the Jesuits. St. Francis Borgia, named for Francis of Assisi at his birth in the year 1510, was placed under the tutelage of his uncle, the Archbishop of Saragossa, after the death of his mother when he was just ten years old. Soon he had to go to the court of Spain, as he was destined to be one of the great lords of that nation. There he remained Christian, modest, and virtuous. His noble and beautiful appearance soon brought upon him snares which he succeeded in escaping, setting for himself regimes of prayer and study to escape from the dangers. He wore a hair shirt and never would enter into any of those games of chance which caused the loss of not only money but of time, the spirit of devotion, and peace of soul. The empress arranged for him to marry Eleanor de Castro of Portugal, who, like himself, was very pious. They were blessed with eight children, five sons and three daughters, who continued to practice the virtue of their parents. Having become the Duke of Gandia, after his father's death, he became one of the richest and most honorable nobles in Spain. In the year 1539, there was laid upon him the sad duty of escorting the mortal remains of his once beautiful sovereign, Empress Isabella, who had died still young, to the royal burial ground at Granada. The coffin had to be opened for him that he might verify the body before it was placed in the tomb, and so unrecognizable, so astonishing a sight met his eyes that he vowed never again to serve any earthly sovereign subject to so drastic and terrible terrible a change. It was many years before he could follow the call of his lord. The emperor named him Captain General of Catalonia and sent him to bring justice to a group of bandits who had ravaged the countryside. The poor found in him strong protection against oppression. Vices were banished by his ordinances. He endowed poor girls and assisted families ruined by misery and reversals. He delivered debtors from prison by paying what they owed. He was, in effect, the very Christian vicery of the emperor. St. Francis was relieved of his duty when he asked the emperor after the death of his father to return and govern his subjects at Gandia. In Gandia, he again did much public good. He built monasteries, founded hospitals, helped the poor in every possible way. But suddenly, his wife was taken from him. He was told by God that his loss was for both his and her advantage, and amid the tears he offered his own life and that of his children, if that would please the Eternal Master. After making a retreat, according to the exercises of St. Ignatius, he made the vows of a Jesuit privately until he could see to the establishment of his children. When he went to Rome with one of them, it was rumored he would be made a cardinal like two of his brothers, but he wished to avoid all dignities, and succeeded in doing so by leaving Rome as soon as possible. St. Ignatius made him vicar general for Spain, Portugal, and the East Indies, and there was scarcely a city in Spain and Portugal where he did not establish colleges or houses of the Company of Jesus. At the death of St. Ignatius two years later, the order chose him to be its general. Then his journeys became countless. To narrate them all would be an impossibility. The Turks were threatening Christendom, and Pope Pius V commissioned two cardinal legates to go and assemble the European Christian princes into a league for its defense. The Holy Pope chose Francis to accompany one of the cardinals, and worn out as he was, the saint obeyed at once. The fatigues of the embassy exhausted what little life was left to him. St. Francis died in the same year as St. Pius V, happy to do so in the service of God and the Church, when he returned to Rome in 1572. Francis Borgia learned the value of earthly grandeurs at the funeral of Queen Isabella. Do the deaths of our friends and relatives teach us anything about what awaits us also?